Shout out to the millions of comments that said try Claude Code. In this video, I'm going to be testing Claude Code with Claude Max, and I'm going to be using this on a Windows machine. Now, if you don't know, Claude Code doesn't work on Windows. However, you can just use Docker to do it for you, right? So first of all, what you need to do, I'm going to show you how to do all of this. So just search Docker on Google and press install Docker desktop on Windows. Install it on Windows, make sure it's open, right? So this is Docker desktop. This is what you need to be able to see. You can uh, log in, etc. It's pretty easy, guys. Just, you know, you just need to download this and get it open. Once it's open, you will also have to add it to path, right? If you don't know what that means, it's kind of complicated to explain, but basically just search for environment and then look for environment variables here. And then I can't pause and I've forgotten how to do it. How, how do you do this again? Uh, path, so you double click path here and you can see my Docker is slash Docker, um, slash Docker, slash resources, slash bin. This is what you need to add to path, right? And then reset your computer or at least reset Visual Studio Code, etc. And then you should be good to go. Now I'm gonna show you how to do this from the perspective of someone with no coding experience, okay? Because these things can seem more complicated than they actually are. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna say, can you help me set up Docker with <clears throat> a Linux um, terminal? Please. So first things first, we'll do that. So no, sorry, wait, I'm on Windows. I want to use Linux. Okay, so I just changed the prompt slightly. Help me launch a fresh Docker instance with Linux on it. So the first thing you need to do is Docker pull Ubuntu. So we can just go to command prompt and run Docker pull Ubuntu. This is, um, I, this will only work if you successfully added it to your environment variables. This will not work if you didn't add it to environment variables. So if it's not working, just be aware of that. So let's run this. Now you can see I'm actually instantly inside Linux, right? This is actually Linux instead of um, Windows now. Okay, so now let's say help... Um, Install Node.js for me. I think that'll probably work. I haven't eaten today, if you can hear my stomach uh, grumbling, guys. Well, I haven't eaten much, obviously, I've eaten something. But... So we'll just run through all these commands that it's telling me to run through. It's one by one. You can see I'm installing it for Ubuntu specifically. Now it's installing Node.js. And then these two commands should then work. And for, I don't know why they make you do this. So Europe, and then I'm in Dublin, more or less. So node version, there we go. And then NPM version, there we go, right? So now I'm on a Windows computer, but it's inside a Linux terminal, right? So this is the advantage of Docker. This is the really, really nice thing about Docker. I actually don't know where, oh, there it is. So you can see we have pedantic Pascal, container ID, image Ubuntu, last started one minute ago, right? So now you can actually install Claude code here. So let's go back to the documentation for Claude code, npm install g anthropic slash Claude code, press enter here. This is that, oh. Did that work? And added three, wait, so now if I run Claude, it should run. Okay, perfect. So I'm not just going to run Claude, I'm going to run this here, which is Claude Dangerously Skip Permissions. This will soon be part of my course inside the school community. I haven't quite added it yet, but I will be adding it very soon. And there are other things here, including working with MCPs, Claude Desktop, Loco tutorials, etc, etc. If you want a little bit more help with the kind of stuff that I'm talking about in this video, if you're struggling to understand what I'm talking about in this video, definitely check out the school community. It will be the first link in the description of this video. Now, what this does is dangerously skip permissions means it's just going to code for me without me doing anything, right? So just before we get into that, the only other thing I want to do is I want to create the project first. The reason being is um, these things kind of struggle with, um, with making... Uh, 
Next.js projects. I'm not really sure why, but we'll go to all my prompts slash workflows here and we'll just run uh, npx create here. So we'll just say yes. Let's just press yes to all of those. Now we'll grab this prompt. This should take a tiny bit of time to install the Next.js project. And the only thing I haven't looked at here is adding MCPs to this, but I think it's actually quite simple. So I might just have a quick look. So let's see, MCPs in Claude code, is that a thing? Claude code, getting started, memory. Okay, here we go. So Claude MCP is a command, CMCP section in tutorial. Add an MCP studio server, Claude MCP add name command args. Okay, that's pretty simple. This is pretty easy. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense to me now that I understand MCPs better. All you do is Claude MCP add shared server project path to server, and that will instantly create the MCP file for you. Oh, connect to a Postgres MCP server. Interesting. That's pretty cool, guys. That's pretty cool. Read only though. Uh, add MCP servers from a JSON configuration. Okay. I'm going to be looking at this in another video, I think, guys, but this does seem fairly simple, to be honest with you. So let's run um, the Claude dangerously skip permissions command. We're now inside Claude code. I'll just press enter here and um, we'll go Claude app. And then we need to open whichever um, Chrome profile is connected to your Claude app. So we'll open this. And then it just gave me a code there that I had to confirm. And now we're inside um, Claude code. So Claude code will not ask for your approval. Beautiful. Yes, I accept. Okay. Oh, what? Wait, why did that not work? Okay, so I've got a weird thing that I've never seen before. It's saying it cannot be used with suit root sudo. Let's have a look. Create a non root user in Docker, right? Okay. I'll just run through all these um, commands. Switch to the new user. Okay, and then for dangerously skip permissions. Okay, that looks like it might have worked. Okay, so we'll just run through the same process. Okay, that works, perfect. So now what we can do is we can grab this prompt. You can see my next app. So if you called it something different, then make sure oh, it is actually wrong. It's not my next app, it's, uh, what did I, my app. Okay, so I'm gonna change the thing here to this, like that. We'll get rid of that and then we'll give this prompt and we'll see how this builds. So we'll press enter here and let's just run through this process. So the cool thing is as well is you can use this either with MCPs or as an MCP. So I believe you can also make it work. Wait, what do you mean MK do? Oh, right, okay. Cause I went onto a different user. The, um, the directory was deleted. So we'll just do this again. Yeah, so you can use this inside client, apparently. I haven't actually looked into that yet, but I mean, if that's true, then that's pretty cool as well. So this currently doesn't have internet access as far as I know. So I might think about installing the Bright Data MCP just so that it actually has access to the internet. Definitely check out the Bright Data MCP. It's like a few different MCPs built into one and it does work really, really well for scraping um, search engines, scraping as Markdown, HTML, and much, much more. Okay, so let's see if this works now. Copy that, there we go. Bypassing permissions, it says, but it's still asking me if, it, if I wanted to do certain things, which is quite annoying. Uh, did that work? Yeah, my app, there it is. Okay, beautiful. So it's properly reading um, the folder now. Cannot access public. Okay. Oh, wait. Um, I need to add images. It doesn't have access to images. Part of the prompt is says use images, just ignore images for me. The cool thing is, is that you can just type at any time. I haven't seen any tool like that, but, but I do really, really like that. 
I think that's amazing. So look, it comes up with an idea. Bang, 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 bang. Okay, nice. The only thing I'm unsure of is how am I going to be able to see the project? I guess I can download it or put it on GitHub or something. Yeah, that'd probably be the best way. Okay, wait, shit, I just realized something. Um, you can probably run more than one of these at once. Yeah, you will. Yeah, of course you can. Help me launch a Linux instance, which I, with Visual Studio Code installed and Node.js and NPM. Um, yeah. Okay, so what I've done here, guys, another very, very simple process. I didn't run you guys through it because I wanted to make sure that I could do it first. But basically, just said the same kind of similar thing to ChatGPT. I said, can you make me a Linux with Visual Studio Code um, th using a Docker file, right? So this time what it did was it created a specific Docker file like this, which already includes um, all of the dependencies, I believe, properly. And it also includes Visual Studio Code, which means I can use Visual Studio Code inside my Docker as well, right? So terminal, new terminal. By the way, guys, I might, I might have just seemed like I skipped like 30 steps, but it's literally, I'm just using ChatGPT to just tell me what to do, right? So it just told me to um, put these two files, Docker file and config.yaml inside a folder, and then just run uh, Docker build and then Docker run, and it worked perfectly without any problems, right? So now we're in a new one. Let's see what happens if we try and use two of these Claude instances at the same time. Now, while I've been thinking about it, it probably won't work um, because I will have to log in to Claude again. And yeah, that probably won't work. What is this? Okay, so there's an error here. Okay, let's, oh, that didn't work. Okay, so you can see here I'm logged in. Uh, well, I'm not logged in yet. So you could just use API here. But I just want to know if you can do two of these at the same time using the Claude app. I'm going to guess you can't, um, but yeah, we'll see. Oh, wait, I need to copy this. I need to put it here. Do I want to interrupt this? Not really, but I don't think this is going to work the more I think about it. Okay, so let's just say make me an HTML and CSS chess game. Let's see. Okay, it seems to be running two at the same time. Obviously, this will use up my um, um, my credits or my yeah my five hour usage limit more quickly. Of course, that's something that you need to consider. But it does seem to actually be running two at the same time, which is amazing because if you can run two, you can run three, and if you can run three, you can run five, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And now, if we start to play around with things like you know spawning a Docker instance, getting it to research automatically using Claude code, you're not actually going to use a huge amount of credits, right? This is where it starts to get interesting. The reason being is it actually ends up being cheaper than using the API, right? If that makes sense. Now, how do I run this? How do I, I want to see it. Where are the, oh, it's the chess. I won't press that just yet. But yeah, this is amazing, guys. Thank you for repeatedly telling me to use Claude code because I do like this. Um, it kind of feels like Rue code, but it's made by um, a company worth 63 billion. Um, so again, I keep talking about this, but they have an incentive to make their max plan something good, right? So let's go to the folder here. Yes, I trust. Terminal, new terminal. Um, how do you run on Linux? Run index.html. No. Okay, nice. It worked. Uh, why is it? Am I mistaken? Did I? Th I always thought it was black black side that started first, not white side. It's black's turn first, right? No, it's white. Oh my god, I completely forgot. I and mean, it doesn't work, but. So this is pretty cool, right? So we ran two of these at the same time. Oh, this is done, okay. Nice, now we can see how this actually looks as well. Um, how do I... 
Yeah, I'll probably have to push this to GitHub just to see it. Okay, so <clears throat> if I do npm, uh, if I just say run the server so I can see it, let's say this works now. Okay, so that was npm install, I'm pretty sure. Oh, interesting. So Claude Code actually says here, context left until auto compact 32%. So that means that I've used about, um, well, I don't know how much I've used. It should be 68%, but it looks like they actually have a compacting thing here, which is huge because that makes all the difference. The problem with the Claude desktop app is once you've run out of context, there's nothing you can do about it, but it looks like they do do something here, which is really, really good. Okay, look, I, I can't get this to work. This is interesting, okay, but um, I think it still needs a few improvements, I would say. Right now, I still think the Claude desktop app is better, but I have a feeling that Claude code is hiding some absolute magic. So I'm going to continue to look into it in different videos. This was just how to set it up, how to get started, and how to play around with it. Thanks for watching. If you're watching all the way to the end of the video, you're an absolute legend. I'll see you very, very soon with some more content. Peace out.